Hi, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. Today, we're going to be talking about the pecs, pec major and pec minor. I've worked with a lot of other massage therapists, and something that I tend to see is that these pecs tend to get 20 seconds of treatment or ignored completely, when these are really important. If your pecs are pulling you forward and down, this can be responsible for a lot of your head forward and shoulder forward posture, which we'll talk about more in a second. First, we're going to talk about anatomy and kinesiology. Then we're going to get a client on the table. We're going to talk about anatomy a bit more. Then we're going to do a demo. If you'd like to skip ahead, please click on the time codes down in the description. So let's start with pec major. Pec major has a really broad origin and a really broad insertion, allowing it to have all sorts of different actions. It originates from the medial half of your clavicle, from your entire sternum, and it goes down a bit into this aponeurosis down here, kind of interacting with your abs a bit. All of these fibers converge on a very broad insertion. The tendon for pec major is very flat and wide. It inserts on the front of your humerus along the bicipital groove, and because it's got such a broad insertion, it allows it to perform all sorts of different actions and act as its own antagonist. The pecs can cause flexion of the shoulder, and it can also cause extension when your arm is up. So, if you're doing a pull down, your pecs are going to assist with the first part of that movement. If you're pressing up, your pecs are going to assist, once again, with the first part of that movement. And as you may know, your pecs help you do a push-up. So that's horizontal adduction and any other adduction, anything that brings the humerus toward that sternum. So pec major you know, you love, but you might not know so much about pec minor. Pec minor is deep to pec major, so you're not going to see it on any bodybuilders. It's not going to be visible. It's it lays underneath pec major, and it comes from this coracoid process, which is part of your scapula. A little finger-like projection juts through under your clavicle here, so inferior to this clavicle, and it just feels like a little knob. If you can't find your coracoid process, then place your fingers just inferior to your clavicle, right near your sternum, follow it outward, until you hit this big roadblock, this big knob. Above it, you'll be able to feel clavicle continuing, and below it, there's going to be some soft muscle. Once you've found that coracoid process, come inferiorly and medially, and that's going to be the course of pec minor. So pec minor comes from this coracoid process, and it sends a few finger-like projections down to the rib cage, to ribs three, four, and five usually, but there's going to be some variation between different people. So what could a muscle this tiny do? When it shortens, it brings the shoulder forward and down just a little bit, but mostly this is a stabilizer muscle. It's keeping your shoulder girdle glued to your thoracic region. But if it's too tight, it can be responsible for some of this rounded shoulder stuff that goes on. And that's something that pec minor and pec major have in common. They both bring your shoulders forward and can help to roll them inward just a bit. Pec major is a powerful internal rotator as well as being an adductor and all that other stuff that I said earlier. So it's bringing you forward and down. So if you've just done a 30 minute back session, and you've done a whole lot between the shoulder blades, and you've worked with rhomboids and trapezius, it would be excellent to give a good deal of attention here as well, to help everything sit back and feel relaxed. This can help with breathing and just being comfortable with your posture. So let's see what this looks like on a client. This is my client, Lee. When I'm working with the pecs, I typically stay in this upper portion. If I'd like to expose more, I do make sure to ask the client, Lee, do you mind if I uncover your chest? No. All right, see, it's just that easy. So that anatomy, once again, we've got pectoralis major, which originates from this entire sternum, coming down into this aponeurosis that interacts with the abdomen down here, and up to this medial third of the clavicle, so a very broad origin to this muscle. And then we get this big meaty part. It eventually becomes quite a bit thinner and becomes tendinous and flat. And it inserts here along the bicipital ridge. And the pectoralis minor originates from this coracoid process, which again is part of the scapula. 
and these come down in a few finger-like projections to ribs three, four, and five or so, and there are going to be individual variations across your different clients. Now, I'm going to start by showing you my most conservative techniques. These are what I do on most clients when I don't feel like I need to concentrate on anything in particular, like I don't feel like I need to give a very thorough treatment to those pecs. And you know, if I've got a time crunch, I'm doing the whole body, I don't necessarily want to spend five minutes with the pecs. But I do want to interact with these in a way that can draw these shoulders out and kind of balance the body. Because if I've spent 20 minutes on the back, on the trapezius and the rhomboids, I would be remiss if I didn't help spread things back in the other direction and give the nervous system a cue that it's okay for these shoulder protractors to chill out. And my favorite way of working with these is to just bring the arm up by the wrist and starting at the sternum, proceeding out laterally as I externally rotate the humerus. So if you remember the kinesiology, the pec major is an internal rotator. So by doing this, I'm doing kind of a moving pin and stretch. And remember, we want to work with origin to insertion and beyond. So I'm starting as medial as I can and moving out laterally, even farther than I need to. And once I've done a few nice smoothing strokes out like this. I want to do some nice petrissage on the pecs, and there are a few ways of doing this. One is to just let your client's hand lay on their own stomach. This will give you some access, but it's kind of a cramped space. There's not a lot of freedom of movement here, but you can definitely get some good work done. Another way is to keep the arm up like this and use the other hand but I do like to have both hands available for this because, for one thing, I like to be able to dig in a bit, and for another, I don't want this one hand to get too fatigued. But my personal favorite way is to drape their arm across my arm, and now I've got freedom of movement for this entire arm just by rocking my body, and now this arm and this pec are very available. I can make contact in a very broad way, with this spec major, and it allows me to add in some movement. So again, this is kind of a moving pin and stretch as I'm drawing this spec major outwards, so laterally, I'm able to just add some subtle movement to the humerus. And that will give a different kind of input to the nervous system than just being still. Let's look at ways of working from this position. You can, of course, just do some nice broad petrissage of this region. I do like to use a duck grip for this. So flat fingers, flat thumb, and drawing that tissue out, as opposed to a pincer grip, which is a bit sharper feeling and not necessarily what I'm going for. And as I'm doing this, I can proceed toward that sternal attachment I can run my fingers just inferior to that medial third of the clavicle to kind of acknowledge that origin of pec major. And I can let my thumbs sink deep into the axillary region so that I'm really squeezing the entire muscle. I'm sandwiching that muscle during this petrissage. If you're afraid to get your thumbs into the axillary region, you're not going to be accessing this entire breadth and depth of this muscle. And continue outward. As you continue following pec major, you'll find that it gets quite thin and ribbon-like, and it's going to join up with some of the muscle and tendinous fibers of the deltoids here right before it inserts. 
So, all of the feel-good tissue isn't just right here. There's also a lot of good stuff as you travel out laterally. And if you've got a client with shoulder pain, work with this entire pec major as much as you can, as much as is available to you, depending on your therapeutic relationship with your client. And you should be able to work out quite laterally and still find good stuff. What about with more of the pec exposed? What can we do? Well, we can do some nice work all along this sternum. We can apply pressure. Again, as usual, I'm coming at this from a myofascial perspective, so I'm not coming straight down at the sternum. I'm coming at it from an angle. So pressure in toward the sternum can feel quite nice using the flat surfaces of your finger pads. Pressure that travels superiorly. And you can always come around to the other side of the table and apply pressure laterally. So I'm demonstrating this on the other pec, but I'm allowing my palmar surface to make some good contact with this pec with as broad a region as possible. I'm taking all this fascia and I'm giving it traction out laterally. Now let's think of some other ways of working with the pec. I don't just want to friction attachment sites or just do some nice petrissage here. I also want to work with this broad fascia. So to do that, I also need to work with everything that's hooking down into these ribs and into this thick white aponeurosis here. So I'm going to come from inferior to superior and apply nice pressure this way, up toward the client's head. And we go ahead and take some easy deep breaths. By having them engage their deeper breathing, they're changing the shape of their rib cage. Those ribs are rotating, and that's doing some of my massage for me. And I do avoid the nipple just for sensitivity's sake. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable, etc and come right up to this clavicle and don't be afraid to offer some pressure in the region of this clavicle as long as i'm not coming straight down at it, it can feel quite nice it can really feel like it's opening up this chest it can lead to feelings of easier breathing and following this out to that coracoid process and to the head of the humerus And one of my favorite tricks is to have the client place their hand behind their own head if they're comfortable with this, if their shoulder is capable of this. So you place one hand along this lateral portion of the, th the thoracic region. Make sure not to come down too far inferiorly. We don't want to be pressing on these floating ribs. And your other hand, again, nice broad pressure up on this sternum and we're creating fascial traction up northward. And as your client breathes, we're dragging all of this fascia covering the ribs and enclosing that pec major and pec minor up northward. This lower hand is going to be making contact with the teres muscles. It's going to be steamrolling over serratus anterior and it's going to be interacting with this axillary region a bit. In this upper hand, the one that's on the sternum, will just follow the course of that sternum up onto the clavicle and then out laterally. While your client's arm is like this, you can come around to the other side of the table, once again offering that pressure laterally. And there are a lot of tools that you can use other than just this palmar pressure or petrissage. You can also use your open fists here, especially in clients who have a bit more pectoral tissue than others. You can use fingertips to give some more pinpoint pressure. You can even use the forearm in this region. Just follow the course of the area under the clavicle 
and keep that pressure out laterally and don't let yourself sink in with that olecranon process and it'll all feel great. Now pretty much everything that we just did was affecting pec minor because pec minor lives underneath pec major. Anything that comes near this coracoid process or travels down onto this pec tissue on the third, fourth, and fifth ribs, this is all going to steamroll over that pec minor. I often don't specifically target pec minor except in other ways. I'll always be outlining this clavicle on all of my clients. And I always like to offer some pressure just inferior to this coracoid region. But if you want to get more specific, you can sink in. First, find that coracoid process. If you need to, follow this clavicle out laterally. Feel for that big roadblock that appears just south of it. And then come south of that. And now you're on pec minor. There are a lot of neurological and vascular structures that run underneath, through, and over pec minor. So I don't like to do a lot of straight down pinpoint work. Instead, I like to come at this at an angle. I'll start on this coracoid process, scoop that tissue, and press it down, following the track of that pec minor. And I'm not necessarily going to be targeting any trigger points here. If you do find an area that seems to be extra sensitive, feel free to stick around for a while. I just ask that you don't do any digging in this area. Don't feel like you need to bust up any knots or anything like that. Because, once again, all of that neurological tissue is perforating and going under this pec minor. So while I do want pec minor to get some novel stimulus, some interesting new input, I don't want to cause it any distress. And of course come past where you expect those attachment sites to be. And once again I will have a video showing these techniques on a female client. The draping's a bit different, but a lot of this stuff is the same. You can come down past this clavicle with most clients. It depends on your therapeutic relationship and how well you have communicated. So I'll do a few passes like that, and then consider different directions, coming from medial to lateral, toward that axillary region and drawing that tissue up toward the coracoid process. Remember there are several muscles attaching right on that coracoid process, so it can be a little sensitive. And if it is sensitive, I'm thinking of those muscles that are attaching there rather than of trying to work out that point. This is likely the innocent bystander, and all these other guys are pulling on it. All right, guys, that's it for today. Let me know if I missed your favorite pec technique and you'd like to describe it to us in the comments. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.